Radio 212, complex. DPS, go. Inco, go. PUS, go. Surgeon, go. Booster, go. Copy that, we have a go from you guys. This is talking sound. The amazing, amazing music of College of Hip Hop Knowledge artist Jason the Professor. Uh, that is off his new single, True Beauty, to be released coming up September 28th. Uh, we have Jason on the line right now. Jason, how are you doing, my friend? Good. How you doing, Chris? Doing great, man. Been a while. Been quite a while since I had you on the show, actually. So welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me back. Dude, I'm so excited that you have a new single coming out. Every time that I'm talking to you, because, of course, uh, you distribute No Disassemble as well, which is my music. But every time I talk to you, uh, there is a new artist coming out. There's a new artist coming out with music, something like that from College of Hip Hop Knowledge. Uh, Big Tree just put some great stuff out. Um, tell us a little bit about this new track, True Beauty, that you have coming out at the end of September on the 28th. So this track, along with all the other tracks that are going to be on the album that's coming out as well, um, I've tried to kind of not abandon classic hip hop, but meld it more with uh, the newer styles, especially the newer styles of beats and newer cadences. So I've, yeah. I've been kind of, you know, trying to blend bars with newer cadences and newer rhythms. Yeah, and it's it's really laid back, a uh, very very chill vibe that you have going on in it. Uh, how long has it been since you put something out, actually? Uh, so I put a single out in 2019, but the last album I put out was in 2018. Wow. Wow. Two years going on. So uh, high time to hear something from Jason, the professor, other than just you behind the console. Uh, you do quite a, you do quite a bit of engineering, mastering, things like that for the artists on the label. Uh, that kind of stuff. And the new studio that you guys have over there at your location is fantastic, man. That vocal booth is top quality. That is, how long did that Appreciate take you it. to build? Um, so it was probably about two, three weeks on and off of total work, um, converting my garage into the studio. The booth was pretty easy to assemble because, I already had it up at my old rental I had. And when I built it there, I built it so it was easy to disassemble and mm, put yeah. back together. So I already, it, it was basically like Legos put together, you know, the second time building it, I already had everything labeled and ready to put together. Nice. Yeah, that does make it super easy. And, you, you know, with modern materials, stuff like that, you can, you can really do a good job with, um, with so many different locations in homes, that kind of stuff. So uh, what you guys have put together over there at the College of Hip-Hop Knowledge Space there in Bastrop is really fantastic. It's a very chill environment. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed the times I've been over there just recording episodes of this um, with you guys. So it's been great. It. Well, it's been great to really see you guys grow in the scene here in Austin and bring about so many new artists. Uh, tell tell the audience a little bit about uh, College Hip Hop Knowledge and what you guys are all about, um, and especially what y'all are about with the local music scene. So we kind of started with the creed that of community unity and opportunity, which is uh, you know just trying to foster a good hip hop community that's together with unity and that's providing genuine opportunity for artists and not just taking advantage of artists. We started it as pretty much a production team. Um, just cause we were sick of all the pay to play going on in town with shows. Yep. We're like, we want genuine shows for artists that are actual shows that they're not paying to perform at that, 
Um, Afton was a company that was pretty rampant, and we ran them out of a couple venues and pretty much took over their venues. Um, yeah, Gorilla then, Productions is known for the same kind of thing with their Battle of the Bands type stuff. That kind yeah, of that exactly. kind of action. same same stuff. <laughs> so we ran them out, and then from there we're like, well, you know, the shows are nice, but we'd really kind of like to branch out more than just shows, and that's where the label kind of came about in the studio because we we were meeting so many artists from doing shows and the number one thing we heard is there's there's no investors there's nobody further in the scene there's nobody taking artists under their wings and teaching them the business of things there's there's yeah. nobody doing any of that yeah at least in austin well well yeah and that's just it you know it's really interesting uh i came to austin and probably within a within the first year went straight corporate um mm -hmm. with with all of my av stuff mainly because i i came and it was really no different music wise than most towns that you go to where you're gonna walk in and as an engineer maybe be making like 75 bucks a night and it's like mm -hmm. you know i'm assuming a lot of risk and responsibility on your stage here uh for basically the equivalent of flipping burgers all night um yeah and i'm <laughs> i'm using my skills my like hard earned in the trenches skills to better the name of your establishment um so it was very much the same mentality and it it, it was one of those that kind of hurt me because you know you you hear about towns like austin nashville very much um is in the same realm, L.A., New yeah. York, Seattle, um, yeah, you know, um, all these c cities with burgeoning scenes in them, and it's so sad to see that artists are regularly taken advantage of in this way, that engineers are regularly taken advantage of in this way. Um, you literally get to a point where you have to convince people to demand more money. Yeah, it's it's almost okay. gotten to the point where the industry <laughs> professionals have become the consumers. Yeah, and the fans yeah. are no longer consumers at all. They just get to sit back and enjoy free product. Well, well, yeah, yeah, precisely. And it's it's just strange to know that like, um, you get so used to lowballing yourself and your own quality and your own self worth that you don't. It doesn't really dawn on you to ask for more money. You know, right. um, and it's sad because yeah, that should be the first thing to dawn on you if if you're in the professional realm. So uh, whenever I heard about you guys and y'all looking to put out other music other than hip hop, um, I was one of the first people to reach out because I've, I've worked with you guys here on Talking Sound. I've interviewed some of your artists. You definitely have it together. Um, you know what you're doing when it comes to this stuff. So I, I was more than happy to be able to come on board with y'all knowing that y'all do have this community aspect. Y'all do have this artist first aspect. Um, I've, I myself having years of experience in rock and roll was very, very happy to see that there was a label out there that wasn't charging people money um, to be a part of things that they, like everything was done right. And it's all done on the aspect of building community and building the artist and enabling the artist in the best way possible. Yes. yes. And you do that primarily through percentages and good business partnerships, not just fees. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, uh, like we were saying, those, it gets, you get so used to it as a musician and as an artist to be like, Oh, well, it's going to cost me 50 bucks to be in this showcase. You know, but I'm going to get to be in front of 300 people, um, whatever. Ooh. Like, yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of a silly backwards aspect that you have to that you get yourself into, um, and to to unwire that and to to begin teaching artists to consider themselves better than that. Uh, that's what I love about you guys is that you're really trying to lift up artists themselves and trying to show them a path forward. Uh, that is not just monetizable, but right um, yeah. and fair. You know, the the fact that y'all aren't out there making like 
sixty percent royalty on somebody's music, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, and there are definitely the the labels out there that do that. Uh, there are definitely people out there that get folks under contract, have them, and use them up for a good two, three albums, and then they're yeah, just done I mean, with the scene by the time they're done. The term 360 deal used to be a bad word. Now it's yeah. commonplace in the industry. If you sign with any big label, they're going to give you an advance, and they're going to give you a 360 deal where they own every per- part of you and your music down to your merch even they make 100 percent profit off your own merch yeah 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 precisely i was having a i was having a big conversation uh my friend daniel gonzalez is head of uh the band breathe um mm-hmm. and he was mentioning that the fact that like he he was able to retain rights to his merch and you yeah, know that's I mean, one of that's those just unheard of in the past that a label yeah. would even want to touch your merch or your touring dollars you know oh yeah yeah no well and precisely a lot of people don't realize like um whenever you go to a concert and you're paying like 45 dollars for a t-shirt folks the reason is that's the money that the band gets mm-hmm. like they <laughs> That's you, it. They don't own that sound recording copyright. They don't. They don't own. Uh, they don't own that. I mean, you know, some bands like Rush, something like that, probably own a decent piece of it. Uh, sure. But most of your modern bands nowadays, like they aren't seeing any money off ticket sales. That all goes to pay the venue. That all goes to pay insurance and touring people mm-hmm. and local people like me who come out and fly the rig to the ceiling, um, yep. and help push trucks of gear and stuff like that. So all the ticket sales goes to put on the show pretty much. And the merch is what the band gets a little bit of leak off of. Um, so buy that merch, folks. Um, <laughs> that is quite literally Definitely. what the musicians are living off of sans advance from a label. So um, so hugely important. With that, with that in mind, let's start kind of cracking the nut a little bit of, about this topic that really spurred this episode on, uh, which is the new Facebook ruling, uh, which has mm-hmm. come out um, whenever, I guess the last project we really worked together on was Black Box Live, which was a showcase my wife and I helped organize with a charity. Um, we were able to provide one grant for somebody of a couple, uh, of, I think it was like, uh, 500 bucks or something like that. So great. Um, we were able to help one person out. It was fantastic. But, um, even whenever I did black box live, uh, the music intro music was made by me. Um, and I featured a song by me off my new album, um, which had just been put through, put through the process by college of hip hop knowledge, uh, with ASCAP and BMI and all that. And within five minutes of me hitting end on that live feed, that first episode, I got blocked by Facebook. The The video was not visible. Um, and it said that I had an RIA compliance issue, that copywritten music was used in my episode. Um, and then within five minutes of that, I got an email from ASCAP and an email from BMI informing me, of the exact same thing that somebody had used my music in a Facebook stream. Um, that just amazes me that like, instead of even checking or vetting or verifying that you are the artists who are providing that, they'll just instantly take it down. Well, well granted it wasn't taken down. It was just blocked from view. It was one of those, like you went to the video and it was like, you cannot watch this. It was just a gray screen with a message. Uh, once I once I went through like the three pages of things and you know uh, contested it and said I am no disassemble I wrote this music, um, yeah. but like I get the same thing month I've just kind of stopped contacting YouTube about the videos on the HC Universal Network um, from mm. from people that use my music as their intro music because. It's like I contact them, I let them know, I give them my ASCAP number. Hi, yeah. I'm I'm Chris Jordan, the artist known as No Disassemble. This is my music. I'm giving myself yeah. permission to use it. 
<laughs> but literally, the ruling that just came out, folks, from Facebook's music guidelines, um, and this is quote, and there, I'm going to go through a couple of quotes here. Uh, uh, the rule reads as follows, quote, you may not use videos on our products to create a music listening, listening experience. We want you yeah. to be able to enjoy videos posted by family and friends. However, if you use videos on our products to create a music listening experience for yourself or for others, your videos will be blocked and your page profile or group may be deleted. This includes live. Now. So, so to me, why didn't they define music listening experience? Well, well, why they, did they leave it so vague? They kind of, they kind of do. Um, and right here, update, Facebook have clarified their guidelines for music and video. Their statement, oh, they did update it. Their statement is, we want to encourage musical expression on our platforms while also ensuring that we uphold our agreement with rights holders. These agreements help protect artists, songwriters, and partners who are the cornerstone of the music community. We're grateful for how they've enabled the amazing creativity we've seen in this time. Our partnerships with rights holders have brought people together around music on our platforms. As part of our licensing agreements, there are limitations around the amount of recorded music that can be included in a live broadcast or video. While the specifics of our licensing agreements are confidential, today we are sharing some general guidelines to help you plan your videos better. Music in stories and traditional live music performances, e.g. filming an artist or band performing live, are permitted. The greater the number of full-length recorded tracks in a video, the more likely it may be limited. Shorter clips of music are recommended. There are always uh, there should always be a visual component to your video. So basically, it's it's like so don't play your whole song. <laughs> well, well, it's just the fact of like, you know, they're trying to they're trying to say like try not to put on an entire two hour concert. Yeah, to me, it's like they're trying to do the right thing without doing the right thing. Well, well, Which... and. It's hard. It's hard because literally the laws are having to catch up with this. And that's what I've been trying to tell people in the podcasting community is get ready. Um, I, whenever I speak at conferences, I try to tell people, um, number one, broadcast is now chasing our coattails. We have stolen their listenership. Um, yeah. They, people are no longer running around with an AM, FM Walkman. They're running around with their phone. While they're jogging, uh, they may listen to the morning show on their way into work on their drive in. They might. Um, mm -hmm. But once they get into their office, they're limited to their personal device. The, the computer at work, you can't have a radio at your desk anymore. The computer at work isn't going to let you dial into Bob FM. Um, but your phone will let you listen to your favorite podcast in one ear while you type all day. So that's why every single radio show now and every single TV show, whenever they sign off, it's, hey, don't forget to tune into the podcast right after this. Yeah, yeah. So literally every single one of those radio station shows, every single one of those TV shows that is registered with ASCAP BMI that is now on iTunes, that is now on Anchor, that is now on Spotify, the algorithms have to turn that way. They have to. Like, you you can't not do it, because how are you going to make sure that radio station that has a show on Spotify isn't playing music during that show that they need to pay royalty for? Yeah. And so, I mean, so now the rest here, of us, let's, independents, let's, let's are getting clear. caught up. We're talking about pennies here. Oh, sure, sure. This is not yeah. massive dollars mm. that they're talking about here. No. They're talking about pennies. Oh, yeah. Oh, believe me, I know. This is like Superman 3 money. All right, folks? Yeah. That, that's what I try to tell people whenever they're like, I'm going to start a podcast, and I'm going to like, I don't understand why I'm not making money with my podcast. And I'm like, okay, my friend, let me let me break this down to you Superman <laughs> 3 style. Um, you get point o or your show earns point oh three cents per listen yeah. you get 80 percent of point oh three cents yep. 
Now let's figure out how long it takes to make a dollar. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. And this no, is totally. this is why your uh, your Spotify programs, things like that, why those accounts don't pay out until you've hit a minimum ten to thirty dollars. You know. Yeah. Um, because yeah, it's going to take a little while. It's going to take you like a thousand listens to make a buck. You know. Well, um, it's been interesting being in the distribution network too. Yeah. How we kind of get behind the scenes information. Like I heard about this going down the pipeline a yeah. long time ago because Sony Orchard started brokering a deal with Facebook to directly monetize and release content themselves yeah. through Facebook. Yeah. And there's a few distribution services who do it now, but they're, there's not many that yeah. they'll upload stuff straight to your Facebook profile and monetize it for you outside of Facebook yeah. because they saw this coming too, where Facebook is even going to start restricting you from putting your own videos on your artist profile and your own because sure. they deem them too long of a music experience. You that, know? That's just it. And there's, you know, they're trying to say like, Hey man, you want to put your music video up? Cool. Um, Facebook was really made as a way for people to like say hi and poke each other and post pictures of kittens that were funny. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it was a social media platform for sure, but was it intended to be a live streaming platform, you know, like a mixed cloud or something like yeah. that? Well, I mean, it never even had live to begin with. It's something they added to their platform. Sure, sure. And it was it was really more for, you know, like, hey, look at what's going on in the world around you type stuff. Like, hey, I'm out at the beach. Um, and, of course, yeah. you know, people like I'm, – I'm not going to say I don't use it. Hell, man, Dudes and Beer goes live every Tuesday night, um, 8 p.m. Central. Uh, <laughs> but Plug, plug, plug. Th that's right. Shameless. <laughs> shameless self-promotion. Um, and I do Facebook live events, stuff like that. Um, and I definitely have friends, like I said, uh, whenever COVID first started, you guys were part of the first episode of Black Box Live, um, uh -huh. all that kind of stuff. So I've definitely leveraged the live platform in that way. Now, is it is it a fact that their servers are meant to take that kind of tax of like Will, point, yeah. Willie Nelson putting on a show and 20,000 people tuning in live to it while there's another 20,000 people trying to put on a live concert in their living room? Probably not. Well, and the funny thing is now they're really getting surpassed by Twitch. Twitch is big. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and rightfully so. Um, and, and I think that's kind of what they're trying to say, because that it, it, the last part of their statement is there should always be a visual component of your videos. Recorded audio should not be the primary purpose of the video. These guidelines are consistent across live and recorded video, both on Facebook and Instagram for all types of accounts, pages, profiles, verified and unverified accounts. And although music is launched on our platforms in more than 90 countries, there are places where it is not yet available. So if your video includes recorded music, it may not be able for use in those locations. Um, and I yeah, think there's, that, there's blackouts all over the place. You'd that, be surprised that yeah. like countries right next to each other, they can't hear music on YouTube that yep. you distributed to them. But, you know, the country right next to them can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, even bringing up YouTube, if you remember um, about a year or so ago, they started their new rules of monetization where if you don't if if you don't hit their monetization point, whether your channel's monetized or not, if you don't hit yeah. their monetization point as far as use and viewers on your content, your account can be deleted at any point. From the point where it should be monetized, so like that six point, that six month point, where you should have, I think it's a thousand uh, minutes of video viewed and ten thousand followers or something like that, um, or ten thousand subscribers in order to be monetized on YouTube now. Um, if yeah. you don't hit that benchmark at any point beyond that, like monetization mark. Uh, they could delete your content. So if you're an independent yeah, artist. Yeah, they just actually sent us an email the other day saying that 
our, our views weren't as much as where they were. And if they didn't increase that, they'd take away one of our privileges. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Straight (laughs) up. (laughs) Straight up gangster, yo. Like that is some Suge Knight action. Like hang you by your laces. (laughs) We won't delete your account and we'll still keep your, your, you know, your content and use your content for our own advertising games, but we're going to take away the privileges we've given you. (laughs) But I mean, dude, I see it all the time and you know me, I'm all over Facebook with not only the network, but with my shows and I'm, I'm very, very active in the podcasting community Uh, as far as answering questions, responding to things. And this RAA compliance thing is something that people are just not ready for. They well, are. here's an interesting and, point that I was thinking about. Go ahead. Do you think it has to do with Facebook buying Instagram and them trying to turn Instagram into that platform? Because they're not cracking down on anybody doing that on Instagram. They're well, only cracking down on Facebook. Well, here's the thing, and this is what I brought up to my wife. you got to remember, man, if they, start, if they start saying, like, yes, this is what we do, they've now changed the official corporate statement of what Facebook is. Yeah. So now they're a live stream provider. That means they now have to fall into the realm of YouTube, where YouTube yeah. now, because they started YouTube Red and all that stuff. You where, think that's what it has to do with? Is where the they, new copyright laws where they, they had, came out with? Yep, where they had Cobra Kai and all. Because don't forget, the Internet is now under control of the FCC. And the only thing the FCC yeah. does is sell and regulate licenses. That's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so when when you I just find it interesting that they don't crack down on their their Instagram service the same way. You know, I mean, they have they will influencers be. all over uh, and, Instagram playing people's music everywhere. And well, of course, they have permission from the artist, but there is no algorithm hitting on it and saying this is copyrighted music on Instagram. Well, and there there will be. Um, that's just it. It's all catching up right now. Um, I just did, a, like, three episodes ago was a guy that lost 160 episodes of a show. And his show went through internet radio stations that paid ASCAP and BMI before it hit Anchor. Uh-huh. So it's not like the people didn't get paid. Now his show's back up and all that stuff, but his show was down for a month. He was scared as hell. He didn't know if he was losing 160 oh, episodes of content or what, you know? Um that's, yeah. that's a lot See, of work for a podcast. They, need, they really need to clear this up, though, because it's just so unfair to creators right now. We're well, left in this limbo where we it's like, really can are. we do this? We or really can't are. we do this? Can it, we do this? Or can't we do this? Well, it's <laughs> it's just the fact of, and it, it it's no different than, like, embryonic stem cell research. Like, the law has to catch up with the technology. Yeah. You know? Um, and I'm sorry to throw that deep cut there. <laughs> But, you know, like, it's the same analogy where it's like, oh, my God, like, dude, they're like, I could buy a crisper oven for my for my like studio desk right here. And like while I'm doing podcasts and editing podcasts, I could be editing crisper like I could be at splicing jeans on my kitchen counter. (laughs) You know, Uh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, But the technology exists and it's there and it's being used on the daily. It's being used to like help help find something for COVID right now. It's amazing. But at the same time, the technology is so rampant and grows so fast. Regulation has to happen. And especially whenever you're talking about an industry like music where regulations already been put in place and been working like clockwork for years. We'll see. But it seems like to me the regulations always favor the corporate side of the industry. It doesn't take into account indie sure. artists at all. No, no. It, it and rarely will it, you know. Um I mean we uh, granted um I mean I I give money to the to the ASCAP lobby. Um I hope I have a voice. Yeah. I do I do their surveys and stuff like that. So I put my two cents in. But uh I mean, and granted, a lot of the laws have changed over the last many years. Like now it's the fact that, uh, like, engineers can get royalty, stuff like sure. that now um, didn't used to be the case. So, like, there there are a lot of things being modernized. And when it comes to these, 
streaming platforms and stuff. Like I said, they they pop up overnight, literally. You know, yeah. Um, like new well, and new platforms. The interesting pop part up. is like a company like Spotify. Uh huh. You'd be like, well, it'd behoove labels to go after them for royalties for artists, right? Sure. Well, no, that's not exactly correct because most of these labels own stock in these streaming services. Yep. And if they keep the money in account and it gives their shareholders more money, which are the labels or the shareholders, then it behooves them actually to not pay artists. And again, <laughs> Superman three is here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Literally. Same thing. Literally. And those pennies up in yep. the account where they, they're not allowed to necessarily touch the money in that account, but the interest levied off that account. Yeah. They can touch that all day long. Yeah, exactly. Precisely. And it's it's hard as an independent artist, like any independent artist knows that the the dream is, of course, to get a to to get a record deal. Um, but at the same time, you know, you look at people like Billie Eilish and damn, man, her last album was recorded in her bedroom, son. Yeah. The money was spent on post-production and and mastering, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and that is the way of the technological world now. And even yeah, the even way the, the gear is, you can, especially right. when you're doing something as as low of a profile as she's doing with very few instrumentation. That's and right. It's, it's just pretty much, uh, you know, a, a beat that's getting mixed, and then yep. she's singing to it. Where you could sing in a chaotic eyeball and have it. I mean, they don't sound exactly like a treated area, but it sounds pretty damn close. Damn right. Yeah, and and that's just it. Like there, are, as this stuff grows, uh, the the figuring out of the pathway has to grow with it. And just mm-hmm. now, are we getting to the point where um, Facebook is? I mean, like I said, you're you're gonna start experiencing quality issues, and the only thing people are gonna say is Facebook sucks now. Facebook sucks yeah. now. And the reason why Facebook sucks is because there are like 200,000 people doing full-on live stream concerts for three hours at a time at the same time on it. And yeah. is that something that the servers were meant to do? You yeah, know? that's true. Is that I, I didn't even think about the, the tech side of it. Yeah, like is, is that, that, that that's some crazy infrastructure, you know? Like look at what's happening across the country right now with Zoom calls in schools. Where literally, yeah, it's like a I deep, heard about that, and it's not any fault of Zooms. It's the fact of the network of the of the school districts is not made to handle that kind of incoming traffic. So it's like a DDoS right. attack. Like literally, mm-hmm. kids going to school is like attacking the server. <laughs> and yeah, my son down. had a whole day yeah. where he didn't have to go to school because yeah. it was just down. They yeah. couldn't do Zoom classes at all. Yeah, because it's got to go through the, like, the only way they can track it is to go through the school server. Mm-hmm. You know? But the problem is, is the pipeline of the school made to handle that kind of traffic. Is it is yeah. it made to handle that? And that's what it comes down to with Facebook is the fact of, number one, as a corporation, is this within our five-sentence paragraph? Um, I tell people all the time with podcasts, and even as an artist, uh, come up with a mission statement. Like, here's your three to five sentences. Like, this is the topic of my article, you know? Bam. This is what I'm about. Um and if you have a question as to whether or not to book a guest for your show, look at that five sentences. And if that guest doesn't fit inside of that, that's not your brand. Right. You know? Um, so is what's happening on Facebook really within the, quote, brand of Facebook? You know? Well, uh, so, I, I think it can be. Sure. It depends on what, what the live stream is. But, I yeah. mean... Ultimately, it's a a, a, show, a social sharing network. Yes. So anything yes. that's a social activity, you should be able to share. Well, the, even if it's a review show, if it's you know, sure. if it's a DJ showing off his DJ skills I, to his friends, mm-hmm. I mean, that's all. We have a mutual friends skill. that do that. Um, and uh, you know, I'm I am in firm agreement with you. I'm just playing devil's advocate because it's one of those like. Like I said, um, now with the way that the Internet is and with the fact that YouTube, when they started YouTube Red, 
had to set up yeah. FTC guidelines. Like now, if you, you know, start they put- merged with uh, Google Play now, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Like they've. Yeah. Um, but it's it's crazy sauce. The fact that if you have an eighteen and up channel, or uh-huh. or like a youth based channel, and post anything that's eighteen and up, you're liable to get an FTC fine, like ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars, like a TV station. Um, yep. So taking that into consideration, knowing that that's the case, uh, I can I can see where Facebook could, especially since uh, like man, they've been up in Congress enough over the last couple of years. What do they got to go up? Uh, they got to go up there for like a fair trade agreement to make sure that they Hell, aren't they... like trying to monopolize or some something like that. You know, this should be well. That <laughs> kind of happened when they bought Instagram. They were like, yeah. That, that's what Why I'm saying. Why did you buy Instagram? Yeah. And it was it was something about I forget. They Either were very similar. Somebody was trying to launch something that was very similar yep. to Instagram. Yeah. And oh, it. They that, bought it out basically before they could to kind of help, and then they lobbied heavily against TikTok. And that's what it is. They're yeah. the ones who lobbied heavily against TikTok. Oh, because sure. Because they're launching some kind of quick video clip service themselves. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I don't remember what it's called, but Facebook has a, a, a platform similar to TikTok they're trying to launch. Yeah, yeah, and and that's just it. Like, um, cool, but the, the, whenever you're doing those things, those much like uh, like you've got an LLC, you know, like you gotta you yeah. gotta write what you're about, and you cannot yeah. stray from that. If you if you do, then you got to rewrite your LLC, resubmit it. And all that stuff. You got to change your articles of incorporation at that point. Um, so if they yeah. start becoming a content streaming company, they're they're liable to FTC fines. They're they're liable to new mm-hmm. cases in Congress because hey, you know they're stepping on toes of other companies and trying to monopolize a market. That's so, true. Like they're I like I can see why they're doing it, but man, prima facie, it was like yeah. That that was like a cannonball in the water of the live stream world <laughs> when when they Especially made this the announcement. Especially the timing. To me, yeah, exactly. If, if the timing was a little different, there probably wouldn't be so much uproar about it. But yeah. the fact that there's no live music going on anywhere right now, and yeah. people are so heavily using these services, right? Yep. Dropping yeah. a cannonball in the water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Precisely, precisely, and that's why you know it was like, "Hey, man!" And we we started having a nice little tort back and forth, just like we are right now. And I was like, it, "Not that I don't want to keep all this in a social media thread, but dude, we should really do an episode on this because, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because literally, it's something that this dude, is going to change some, the way some things." Some idiot happen. got on there and tried to tell me that it wasn't a direct quote from Facebook because there's grammatical errors because they're using product as a proper noun. I'm like, well, that's how they used it, bro. It is their yeah, product. It's, it's their a proper product. noun. Yeah. <laughs> guess, guess what? You're their product, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you and your opinions saying, are their product, product and, as well. <laughs> yeah, because, like, again, like, I'm all for an intellectual debate or whatever, but, like, once you start, like, just being insulting and being an idiot about shit. I'm just going to delete you and move on. Yeah, I got to roll, man. I got, I got to, I got to bounce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like whatever, live in your happy little world. I'm done with you. <laughs> well, well, and that's just it. Like whenever, whenever they announced that YouTube views would now count toward Billboard, uh, people were like, "That's yeah, crazy to yeah. me because it's so ripe for just abuse." Abuse, yeah. Abuse, you think? <laughs> like, it's already been shown the fact that, number one, YouTube pushes to the top uh, the cream of their crop to begin with in yeah. the searches. Like, that's already known. So if you're paying money for ads on YouTube, they're going to be pushing your stuff to the top. Um, and then once again, you go back to that ruling that came out like close to a year ago where you ain't got enough views for monetization. We could just get rid of your stuff, independent artists. 
Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, big, big name, big label people with yeah. money for ad space and ad campaigns and stuff like Thank that. Thank God we're blessed to be under Orchard, and they keep all our stuff monetized and content creation IDs on point, so we don't have to yeah. worry about that. Well, let's, <laughs> uh, let's get into that in the last few minutes here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that real quick. Any artists that may want to get in touch with you um, may want to court college of hip-hop knowledge for distribution that kind of stuff what are y'all looking for uh what do they need to have like in step and in line um before they come to someone like you for distribution well we're looking for solid professional individuals who have quality music because at the end of the day we're taking a very small percentage of the the product to, to mm -hmm. pay for our services so if it's someone who is unprofessional or just not just doesn't have solid music, it's it's just not going to work, you know, because we're talking pennies here already. So we're going to end up putting in a lot of work for a little return. Yeah. But again, we want to help artists, but at the same time, we're trying to run a business. And to me, the main thing is professionalism, because music is very, you know, subjective. Anyone can say this sucks or this is good. It, it but. At the end of the day, if you don't have your business end right, we suffer. If if you're not able to fulfill stuff we ask for, we suffer. Like, you wouldn't believe how hard it is just for some artists to get us their damn lyrics. It's like, no. well, you wrote these down, didn't you? These are your lyrics. How is it so hard to provide us with lyrics? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope you wrote them down. <laughs> 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 right i mean it's like I, I just don't get it like my lyrics i have them all filed ready to go you know whenever yeah. i need them i have my lyrics but so many artists are like oh i just memorized mine or what okay well write them back down yeah, it, you I, know like i write them down <laughs> then i burn them in a ceremony you know <laughs> yeah. like, i burn like, them after i recorded them uh, Are you summoning Satan to get you famous? Or like, I don't understand what's happening with your lyrics here, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so, it professionalism to us is the biggest thing. We're more than willing to help you understand what it means to be professional. But yeah. if you aren't willing to put in the work to get to that next level, that's that's the problem. Laziness, really. An artist yeah. who we feel is lazy, who is looking for just that magic key or, you know, that magic thing that it's just going to make me huge if I just sign this contract. Like, yeah. shit doesn't work like that. It takes hard work. No matter how talented you are, it's always going to take hard work. That's right. Always. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, quite honestly, that is the that is the running joke on site. Just, if it, just about anywhere in the country when I'm pushing cases, and setting up screens and doing shows with people, all you, all you got to do is drop the line, man, I'm just doing this till my album drops. And you'll hear <laughs> everybody start laughing on job site. Because like, yeah. we've all heard that line from somebody at some point sure. <laughs> on a show. And then three years later, That's you're like, one. you're like, how's that album going, bro? <laughs> <laughs> still here i noticed yeah right i mean i tell artists all the time this this isn't you know a magic key no all this is is i i'm a carpenter so i use the analogy all this is is that it's a better tool for your toolbox That's i right. mean it it's still a tool it's still on you how you use that tool if you're hammering with the wrong end of the hammer it doesn't matter how nice of a hammer it is <laughs> that's right that's a, absolutely correct, man. Abs I could not have put that better. So uh, that that's probably some of the best advice you can get right there, folks, if you're trying to get to the point of distribution, um, things like that. I, I'll be honest. Um, I, I was guilty of some of these myself. Um, things oh, so was I. That's how I know that <laughs> you don't do these things now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, we're we're able to tell you what to do because at some point we jacked it up. Um, yep. <laughs> so everybody uh, makes mistakes. It's all on how you learn from them and recover. That's right. It's all about the recovery, man. It's all about the recovery. So um, tell everybody where they can go to find your music, where they can go to get a hold of College of Hip Hop Knowledge for artists, recording sessions, mastering, mixing, all that good stuff, man. So we have a website chhk512.com that has everything kind of in a neat little package there um 
the studio is the Academy Recording Studios. You can look us up on on Facebook or Instagram. We have pages for it on both. Um, College of Hip Hop Knowledge. You can look up on any social media. We have a uh, you know Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Just College of Hip Hop Knowledge. Um, me personally, you can look me up under J Sun the Professor. J S U N the and then professor like not like to teach even though i know it's confusing since it's the college of hip-hop knowledge but it's professor like it's it's a perversion of the word prophet or prophesize That's like right. profess, profess someone who professes exactly it's not an actual word <laughs> because that would be a prophet not a professor you know what i'm saying yeah. so but uh yeah you can find me under that name anywhere and i'm also a member of, of uh the group academics aka d-e-m-i-c-s and you can find uh us on social media or whatever streaming platform you use as well fantastic well jason thank you so much as always for taking the time to come on really break things down to a common sense reality with with a lot of this stuff when it comes to ASCAP rules when it comes to all that kind of stuff. So um, it can all be so confusing. And to be able to break it down into common sense terminology and talk about it like a human being and not a lawyer is so nice. Uh, <laughs> so um, please do hold the line while we close things out. While you're online, checking out chhk512.com and all of the great stuff from College of Hip Hop Knowledge, make sure to stop on by TalkingSoundShow.com. That's where you can find all the episodes. That is where you can find our freelance directory. If you're a freelancer like I am in the AV world, uh, feel free to drop us a message. Send us a few companies locally that hire freelance AV technicians. Pay it forward. Uh, this is a curated list of states and cities across the country and AV companies that hire folks like us. So... Stop on by, check that out. Make sure to check out the newly revamped industry news section. Tons of stuff coming out from Sound on Sound. Um, and Colton Cases, uh, who we recently had on the show. Great new feeds on there. Uh, tons of new products and updates coming out all the time. Make sure to stop on by and check out the HD Universal Network. Until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of your hearing, and keep reaching for 11. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. This is Talking Sound.